and welcome to another edition of Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long. Hope you caught our conversation with new defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris. If not, add it to your queue. It's worth a listen. Today, we're going to introduce the new special teams coordinator in L.A., Joe D. Camillus. Fascinating personal story and professional one, too. He's got a wealth of experience, and we're thrilled to have him on staff with the Rams. Enjoy. Well, Joe, it's an honor to uh, welcome you to Los Angeles and to the Rams organization. Suffice it to say, you've been down this road before. And when you do go to work with a new franchise, what do you feel is the first step to getting acclimated and setting a course for the season ahead? Well, the first step is obviously knowing your players that you're coming into, um, which they've really already started that out. Uh, I've graded them, looked at them on tape. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're looking for a fresh view and see what I thought of them. Um, and then, you know, then it's just starting to really get a p- plan in place um, with the head coach, with the staff and, and finding out where you're going from there. And, uh, you know, then you follow through the normal offseason from there. When you talk about getting on the same page with the head coach, in this case, Sean McVay, do you, in your experience, have a lot of variance between the head coaches and their philosophies and what they want from their special teams groups? A ton. I mean, it's a, it's a different it's a different place uh, or different you know, motivation for everybody else, different, different uh, situation for each head coach. So it's, it's, you know, going to be challenging, obviously, but I've heard nothing but great things about Coach McVay. I've known him for, you know, from afar from quite a while and and have uh, talked with him, obviously, extensively now. And I'm, uh, I'm jacked up to be with him. That's for sure. How about this? The best NFL special teams units have what in common? Well, I mean, it all starts with players, first of all. I mean, it's, it's no different offensively or defensively, but you gotta have you got to have players that, that buy in and that play faster, play smarter, and play tougher than anybody else that they're playing. I mean, if you can do that and they, they play hard and they play with their hair on fire, you got a chance every week. You mentioned uh, having the chance to speak with Sean McVay. How did you connect initially, and what sold you on the opportunity with his ramps? Well, I mean, obviously, I've known a lot of guys on that staff. Uh, Aaron Cromer, uh, Wes Phillips, uh, Brian Zanders is in personnel. Les Snead was was with me when we were uh, in Atlanta. So I've had a lot of, uh, you know, people that are familiar with him. Uh, plus, just, you know, you watch around the league and you see a team that's been in the playoffs three out of the last four years, the nine and seven, the other one. Um, that's obviously something that's very appealing uh, to get into. That's for sure. Is he who you've heard that he is? He's been uh, in the headlines quite a bit over the last four years and including recently. What were your impressions getting to speak with him? Um, you know, an energetic, passionate. Uh, you can tell he's organized. Um, you can tell that uh, he wants to win and he wants to win a championship. And I think that's, you know, luckily I was in a championship um, uh, with Denver. We won a championship in 2015 and uh Getting a chance to go chase one with somebody like him and the rest of those guys that are there is a is a dream come true. I'm jacked up about it. Joe, another famous uh, Georgian has played a central role in your life as well. I've enjoyed reading about your relationship with Dan Reeves. Uh, for the benefit of our audience, could you share with us what he's meant to you personally and professionally? Okay, so Coach Reeves, um, I started working for him in 1989. And basically, I was a... Uh, uh, I was a GA, you could say, uh, on the pro level, um, did everything, got coffee, the whole thing. And then um, uh, I was fortunate enough to start uh, in the special teams uh, area uh, a couple years after that, helping out in Denver. And then when we went to the Giants, I basically was his special teams coordinator. And, uh, you know, he, he's a great man, great coach. We won a lot of games. Unfortunately, we didn't win a, uh, win a championship, but we were in two Super Bowls. Uh, while I was with him, um, he was just a huge, huge influence on me as a person, me as a coach. Um, a lot of the things that I've that I've that I believe in, I, I got from him. Uh, he's now in Georgia, uh, still. He's in Atlanta, um, and we talk all the time. Uh, he's he's a second father to me, and um, I know he's proud to, to see us going to this organization. A second father, for those who may not know or be aware, how did you meet initially? So we, um, uh, my wife and I were, uh, I wish I could say it was some romantic, uh, you know, we were someplace romantic, but we're actually at a bar and uh, we, uh, we ended up dating during that time. And then uh, really about, I don't know, I didn't know for about a month who he was, um, you know, or who her father was, obviously. 
And uh, he came up and uh, I got to meet him then, went to his house. Uh, it was uh, it was pretty cool, that's for sure. But uh, it went on from there. We, uh, we actually, a good story was we played lawn darts against each other. I don't even think they have lawn darts anymore. And I beat him the first time. And uh, coach is ultra competitive. He wants to win everything. So we were out there, needless to say, for about two hours until he won two in a row. So it was a, it was a great, it was a great introduction to him for sure. Oh, that's an awesome backstory. Thank you for sharing it again with us. Let's get into the uh, 2021 Rams a little bit. And maybe we can start with your place kicker, Matt Gay, who really did stabilize the situation here in Los Angeles last year. But he's admittedly still new to this kicking game, having kind of converted from soccer to, to football during his high school and college years, and says that he's an unfinished product in that regard. What upside do you see in him from afar? Well, first of all, he's got great technique. Um, you know, for, for doing it for not that long, um, it's amazing how quickly he picked up the technique. So it's repeatable, which is what you want. And then um, – the other thing that I would say is he's got the power on his leg to be a to be a good NFL place kicker, which you know a lot of guys don't have. Um, so that those are the two things that, that stuck out to me. But you know we were we were in the unfortunately we went through six kickers here in Jacksonville this past year uh, due to injury and due to some other things of COVID, all that kind of stuff. But uh, he was a guy that was on our radar. I wish we would have picked him up. You guys got him, and uh, I'm glad we got him now. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, we could do a whole show on Johnny Hecker, of course. Maybe someday we will. Uh, but did you know last season was the first time in his career he did not attempt to pass? So I just want you to be forewarned that he's going to be uh, campaigning pretty hard when you get to town. Okay, he won't be the only one because I'll be campaigning right there with him. Uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've run some fakes uh, throughout my career, and it's great to have a guy that can do that. If you don't, you know, your fake uh, menu is way down. But with him, it's, uh, it's going to be up and uh, – Glad to have him, man. He's a true pro. He's a, a, you know, we just want to put him back in the Pro Bowl as quickly as we can. Joe, unlike with offense and defense, a good number of what we figure will be your core contributors may not even be on the Rams roster yet, right? You still have agency, the draft, OTAs, camp, all of that a long ways off. Historically, how have you overcome that this time of year to put these days and weeks and months to good use? Well, I just think you have to, first of all, you have to study the guys that are there. Um, you're going to have a pretty good idea of the guys that will be there, to be honest with you. You'll, you know, there, there's a salary cap situation. That's, there's salary cap situations that come up. Um, you know, just the roster is going to be in a, in a way that you know a few guys are going to be there. And then you delve into the draft, which has always been probably my favorite part of it because you get to look at guys and you get to find guys down the line that you can target and try to develop. And I think – in our, in our phase right now, you've got to be able to do that. And if you can do that, you got a chance of being really good, really quick. And I think, you know, that's something that, uh, that I'm looking forward to for sure. And then, obviously, you got to have a, a really good plan for them going forward. I think, you know, with the COVID rules and all that stuff, I'm glad I went through it last year so I can see exactly uh, some of the pitfalls and things that we got to do to try to get that started on the right direction uh, going forward. Joe, you've been in this role for more than three decades in the league now. How strongly do you feel at your core about the role special teams play in determining outcomes? Well, I mean, I, I, think, I think all you have to do is look at field position. Every time that there's a kicking play, most every time I should say, it's going to be either involved in points scored or over 40 yards of field position. So it's a huge play within the game. Um, and then I also think with the team that we have right now, I was – Fortunate, like I said, to be on that Denver team. Um, we did it different ways. That was one thing I learned from Coach Kubiak was he didn't care if we won it offensively, defense, for in the kicking game. There were different ways to win. And, uh, you know, we, we were fortunate that we were able to help out in that area and uh, really be a support system for that team, and I'm hoping that we can do it here too. What does that Super Bowl 50 ring mean to you, and how motivated are you to make sure it has company uh, in your house soon? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's obviously, I, I think when you're a younger coach, um, I got it when I was uh, 50, okay, so I'm 55 now, but I think when you're a younger coach, you just think, oh, when you get one, you're going to be satisfied, but that's really not the way it is. I mean, it's a, it's an intoxicating feeling, man. You just want, you want to get as many as you can. It's a, it's a feeling that I'd like to experience with more people and, and different people for sure, and it's, 
it's a neat deal, man, for sure. A couple more for you, Joe. As a special teams coordinator, it seems like you are a unique breed and so are your peers. In a normal offseason, do you all have a convention somewhere? Yeah, unique is a good way to put it. That's that's. I don't think we'd be described like that from uh, from everybody, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, well, usually the combine is where we all get together. So we had a – we had a uh, – a ritual that we would do every year and we would end up uh, in Reno, Nevada, actually every special teams coach would go there. Joe Avizano with the Cowboys, uh, Brad Seelett, all the old guys would go out to Reno. And one year, uh, Avi won the Super Bowl, And one of the coaches said, well, from now on, we're going to have you pay for the meal. Well, that was in, uh, that was probably in the early, early 19s. I mean, it was, it was early 19. I don't know. 95, something like that. And uh, so that that meal was probably about $200. Well, I can tell you when I paid for my meal, it was about $7,000. So a <laughs> little different, but we've always done that. The, the winning coach gets to uh, gets to buy dinner for everybody, and uh, I hope I'm buying it again. So those are uh, some ways, some connections that you're similar with your peers. In what ways do you think you're distinguished? Like what makes you different among NFL special teams coordinators? Well, I would say my experience, first of all, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it in those decades. I've seen it, you know, um, really in three decades, like you said. So I've I've seen it grow. I've seen it change. Um, but I, I think uh, probably I would say the thing that I'm going to try to make sure that I bring there more than anything else is my passion. I want to be passionate every day. I want to be passionate in everything I do. I want my players to be passionate in everything they do. And if we can do that. Uh, it, it's going to it's gonna spill over into Sunday. And lastly, Joe, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, uh, but my radio broadcast partner is Maurice Jones-Drew. And I just wonder, in all your years in the NFL, is he the most difficult return man you've ever had to coach? Yeah, he was a pain. There's no question about it. Uh, you can ask him about his uh, – He in the playoffs, we broke a long return against uh, Pittsburgh, right? And he got tackled at the two-yard line. Uh, it was a 98-yard return, and, I mean, he took a – bunch of crud after that because he couldn't get it all the way in you know they were all on his speed and all that but great player great dude and uh unfortunately I didn't have him long enough because he started to become a big time guy then and uh didn't get him all the time Joe you know it's funny of all the highlights he likes to talk about that isn't one of them normally it's touchdowns and trucking linebackers and stuff never getting hawks never running out of gas on special teams yeah we can pull it up uh it's uh, 2007 <laughs> against Pittsburgh Steelers uh we beat them we beat him twice in our stadium that year, and uh, he was the one who really started it off. We ended up going, like I say, 98 yards, and he got the thing started. Well, I know MJD is excited to welcome you to Los Angeles. We are as well. Uh, enjoy your travels and uh, settling in here with the Rams. See you soon. Thank you very much. Good to be back in the saddle for Rams Revealed, and with your support, happy to carry this podcast forward into 2021. Please take a moment to rate and review if you haven't already. Looking forward to profiling many more players, coaches, and personalities in the year ahead. Maybe even a quarterback, who knows. Remember, we cannot wait for you to step into the Rams house in 2021. There is still time to be among the first to experience it. To purchase season tickets, visit therams.com slash 2021. Thanks for listening. I'm J.B. Long.